This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, this is the Cyber Underground, and Dave, the professor, is not here today. So uh, my name is Andrew Lanning. I'll be hosting, I guess, today for us. Um, and I have a guest here today, Chuck Lurch. He is from High Tech Hui. Chuck, welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, we are going to be taking you through some of the cyber challenges for the small businesses, and not just small businesses in Hawaii, small businesses everywhere. Um, first, I want to learn a little bit about Chuck and uh, give you guys some of his credentials, and uh, then we'll get into it. So, Chuck, uh, give us your, you know, give us your, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, where you're good. from, what you did, how you arrived here today. Okay, great. So, I'll keep it short. Um, so, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I okay. landed out here in 2001. Ah. I was a consultant for the DOD and the FAA. Uh, from there, in 2005, they moved to Las Vegas to be the CTO of a national healthcare company. We put family doctors wow. inside Sears and Kmart. Okay. And then from there, I went to work for our family.coms, and we had data centers all over the world, and wanted to raise my kids here in Hawaii, and decided to bring them back here. Nice. Yeah. That's a quick, quick segue. So, <laughs> how long have you been back? Uh, I've been back since 2012. And mostly working on? Uh, of course, I was working with uh, DR Fortress. Okay. Uh, for many, sure. many years as a consultant employee, back to consultant. Okay. And at the same time, we also had our company with my wife and a couple other partners that uh, we created was High Tech Hui. Yeah. So uh, DR Fortress is the yeah. major uh, data center out here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. if you don't know. And Chuck's does a lot of the, uh, you did architecture, you architecture, did design, sales engineering, engineering, all sorts of different support, things. just whatever, jack of all trades over mm -hmm. there. Yep. Right on. And then uh, High Tech Hui has been offering services to enterprise, small business, everybody. What's, yeah. uh, what's sort of their uh, history? So High Tech Hui, uh, Hui you know, is a bunch of people coming together, a community, right, sure. or a business. Uh, so it's a bunch of IT consultants that came together to create High Tech Hui. Um, and we came from various backgrounds. Like, so one of our partners came off of Wall Street. Um, my wife, for instance, uh, worked for Accenture, Microsoft, Amazon. So we have a lot of uh, technical experience in the company as well. Um, we wanted to bring that to all the companies here in Hawaii. So we work with small business all the way up to enterprise. Awesome. Uh, where the focus has always been on security from day one. Uh, we are partners with Security DNA before they got spun down by FireEye. Okay, right yeah. on. And so that's still, so do you, you bring in products, so you offer the products as well as the config and support? Uh, High Tech Hui, okay. We do, we do. So we offer um, not just products, we offer all the services that go along with that. So if we need pen tests or Whatever you know, the enterprise or small business needs, we have products and or services that go along with that, depending on, of course, what it is. Awesome. Okay. So yeah. I think this, I can safely say that as a small business owner, that the status of small business in Hawaii from a cybersecurity perspective uh, is pretty grim. I'd like to think yeah. that from a security, <laughs> from an electronic security perspective, I think we've done a good job. We've got some great security companies in town. So the companies that have availed themselves of those services, I think, have the you know access control on the doors. They've got good mm -hmm. surveillance. They've got good communications, um, good intrusion detection, things like that. But as soon as we get underneath that fabric and get into the IT network, and even mm -hmm. of course the um, the uh, network, uh, you know, cyber maturity of some of those types of systems that have been put onto their network, right. um, you find a lot of what I like to call sort of consumer grade applications. You mm -hmm. find things expose things without firewalls, things that can't be patched, things that could be patched that aren't patched, all that kind of stuff. So what's your take on the sort of cyber hygiene or cyber maturity of mm. the SMB and SMB is small, medium businesses um, in that market space in Hawaii? Um, it's still pretty sad. Yeah. Um, and I mean that in a loving way. It's, yeah. you know, we go into a lot of small businesses. A lot of them have applications that were maybe developed out here by somebody. Mm. And then they lost track of the developer. He moved on. And then they have these applications that cannot be patched. So they have very mm. insecure applications. Um, their brother-in-law, you know, maybe put in a Linksys route or something like that and thought they were protected. And, you know, these different things. And we, we see a lot of things. We hear a lot of sad stories about oh, our account got hacked, um, you know, 20 grand went to Russia. Like, we hear a lot of these stories, and it, it is very sad, and that's why we're very, you know, um, proactive in the market. We do free seminars. We try to get as many people and educate the market as much as mm -hmm. we can. Um, and the more education, the better. And the, the other part of it is it's, it's not just a technical issue. Yeah. It's a cultural issue with business in Hawaii, or just not in Hawaii, it's anywhere in the it's country. Across, yeah, across the globe, I think we can yeah. almost safely say, but, you know, we know we know Hawaii and we know the, um, I think um, Verizon, uh, their report, uh, Gardner, I think all the major reports t tend to see numbers at least in the high 80s yeah. for, like, confidence in small business owners that they, that they don't have any problems. Right. But we see, 
when the assessments get done, that 90 plus percent of them ha are, are basically wide open totally. to even uh, small or, or um, what would you call non-nation state type attacks, like very generic sort of attacks that are known, that are active in the wild, right. uh, they're vulnerable to that because they haven't done any of the basic things you need to do in cyber hygiene to sort of shore yourself up. Like patching, so, right? Like I mean, patching. <laughs> so let's so let's let's get into a few of those. I, I um yeah. I, I yanked down just the the SBA's top ten. So let's okay. just you know so they they advise small business, and I thought this would be a good place to start. And these are all the things that we tend to talk about. But mm -hmm. um, so first of all, protect uh, against viruses, spyware, and other malicious code. And by the way, that doesn't mean on Windows ninety five you can't fix it. <laughs> so you need to really be on Windows ten, at least at Windows least. seven eight yeah. today. Um, so talk about that a little bit. What's the sort of maturity, the services that you're able to offer to small businesses today in that market for, for malware protection, antivirus, things like that? Right. So um, what makes us a little bit different than other security providers, I would say, um, is that we look at what's in the market today and what the vendors are selling. So there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace. Yeah, they're so, it's like wide open. It's like a, open the fridge and all, this, all your veggies <laughs> fall out on the floor, right? Like, exactly. So. And they all say that they're the best and, yeah. you know, we'll protect you and, you know, you know, five years ago, we were strictly a services company, and then, you know, we kept hearing all this stuff. I'm like, you know what? Let's do something about this. And then mm. we came on to, you know, one of the first, I call them game-changing applications or antiviruses, which was Silence, right? Mm -hmm. So they said, well, beat us up. I'm like, really? Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, Nobody says that. <laughs> I know, right? So we started doing that. We started benchmarking against, like, the crowd strikes and all the other, these other next-generation uh, AVs that are out there, mm -hmm. and we do it every month. So I could tell you this year, you know, without a doubt, this is your best best bet. Yeah. Next year, it could be McAfee. I mean, I could I don't, be something else. Yeah, it could be something else. So you yeah, need so, to stay on top of all that. Yeah, it's interesting. I, th I think, and the you know, a small business owner, he's yeah. working on his business. He yeah. really has no way to keep up with all that. So he may be running some of the older sort of signature based type of of antivirus things, which right. really, you know, if if you don't know, these are really only good against things that are out there in the wild that have been assessed and known, and they built updates for that and add it to your engine. Mm -hmm. But if there's brand new things, you need tools like Silence would take yep. advantage of uh, machine learning or a little yep. bit of artificial intelligence perhaps um, to look at the file structure and the actual stuff coming into exactly. your computer and saying, hey, this is not correct. And then it stops it from even executing uh, on your machine. So, you know, you need to probably look at a provider if you have no idea, you're not able to keep up with these things and you're in the small business market. Mm -hmm. Don't just accept that the thing you have today that you always had is doing what right. it needs to do for you. You know, the newer tools do newer things, and you may yep. need a layered approach. You may need one or two of those. It's hard to say. Yep. Um, number two, they got, uh, here's, a, here's some great advice, a little <laughs> generic for me. Secure your networks. Mm. Okay, safeguard your connection <laughs> using a firewall and encrypting your information. Now, let's be honest. How many places do you walk in? They might have a firewall. It, might, might. it, it might even be updated with the latest firmware and things like right. that. But how many of them are running any kind of encryption? Barely any. Very, very few, yeah, right? Exactly. And And because I think the word maybe freaks people out. Mm -hmm. And this is not that difficult. This device, your Windows 10, I think Windows 7 even, mm -hmm. ships with a BitLocker. Yep. It, it come, you have to turn it on. Just just turn it on and it completely yeah. encrypts your hardware. Now, don't lose your key, by the way. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, there's there's some things you can do if, if you have important data on, on your machines themselves mm -hmm. to add encryption. A lot of it's there and people just don't use it. So what do, what do you see when you walk into most you know, small business owners? How are they handling their, the data that they have? Well, it's, 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 they, they're doing the best that they can with what they know, right? You know what you know, mm -hmm. right? So they, they think that they're doing the best. They have any virus, and they, they probably don't even know about the encryption piece, right? So It's really rare. I mean, I'm people <laughs> I go and go, it's, they think it's crazy, but it's, you just turn it on. Yeah, I mean, it comes with Mac, comes with Windows. Yeah, it's there, yeah. right? So, um, um, so not too many. Okay, so and then firewalls, you know, you know, they might have a firewall, but then all the ports are open. Yeah, like port so here, forwarding like RDP, which of course is Microsoft Remote Desktop yes. or something like that. So they're wide open to the world anyway. Yeah, so hit so so uh, understand what that firewall is doing, and the, the, <laughs> we'll talk a little bit. So today, there's a lot of next gen firewalls yes. that are doing intrusion prevention and intrusion detection, mm -hmm. and all these other tools that run as a service. Right. Right. So you can get a firewall mm -hmm. from like High Tech Hui or. Cisco, it doesn't matter where you get it, but these next generation firewalls have a lot of services mm -hmm. built in that are sort of kind of monitoring that threat fabric that's out there, right, and looking for vulnerabilities. So like if you click a malicious link and your, your browser tries to go there, it's known bad by the rest of the right. world so that this next generation firewall will stop you from actually getting there mm -hmm. and, and downloading something poor. So 
you know, again, don't accept that what you have that will always work. Get it, get it pen tested. If you're not sure yourself, get some help with it. Mm -hmm. um, number three, they've got established security practices and policies. Now, who's got policies? <laughs> who's got all these policies written? Let's just raise your hand. Everybody. I got some. Right. Yeah, Do I, I, I have them all? Have some. Do I have them all? I doubt it. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's a lot of work. It is. Um, don't, and so the, the, my advice there, I don't know what you tell about, you know, don't just go do things. Don't just go buy a tool because you heard it's a good tool. Mm -hmm. Have a, understand r the reason why you're doing something to help your business. Um, and that's part of that policy. Somewhere mm -hmm. in your policy, there's a reason, you know, you've assessed some risk that you're trying to mitigate. And that's what the policy addresses. And that's why you implement the tool. Right. And it's, I see it the other way all the time. They buy the tool, and then maybe they go back and write a policy. They know why they're trying to do something, but they never write it down. Exactly. Um, here's another big one, and mm -hmm. I think maybe this is some of the stuff you guys get into. Educate employees about cyber threats, and then hold them accountable. So what kind of education do you see going on, and what, what do you guys offer? So we offer, um, you know, with anything that we do, we have two types of programs. We have like a car, like a small business program and our enterprise program. So uh -huh. the small business programs are a little bit more affordable, so more of the... Um, we call it like uh, spear phishing campaigns, and so we have different types. So we have, you know, a service that will automatically spear phish your employees and see if okay. they're clicking on links. And it's an education series, and it's pretty good. And for our advanced clients, we have a, I call it like a, a written spear phishing campaign that's not mm. going to trip off a lot of the filters. A little more advanced. Ah, a little more customized. Yeah, a little more customized. So going and trying to get the big guys. Yeah, to, exactly. To get some buy-in. So what do you what do you kind of buy in? Do you think that the small business owners have like and, and let's get if we out of the small mm -hmm. shops, out of the twenty man shops, into the fifty hundred man shops that you see out there, are is ownership paying attention to this stuff? Are they buying into spending money on training? Are they are they you know upgrading their systems or what do you think? Um, once they understand what the what the value is and like what the effect on their business is, like if they don't do this, um, they start to buy in. So we're seeing more and more buy in. It's, you know, it's just it's um, again it's cultural. If the owner doesn't have buy in and see why this is important, then the rest of the employees aren't going to see why it's important. Mm -hmm. So it needs to start at the top and then work its way down. Mm -hmm. And once the owner is passionate and gets you know understands the risk to his business, he's going to want his employees tested all the time. Yeah, there you go. And then and a lot of people that we test. You know what happens is eventually the employees start to catch on and they get it, and then they they know not to click on every single link that comes. Yeah, through. you see, finally see those adoption <laughs> rates fall down. Some of the best I've heard though still get you know three four percent is about as good as it gets. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So for the small business mm -hmm. owner, just understand you're probably never going to get it perfect, and your employees are never going to not mm -hmm. be foolable. There are, you know, the, when they're when they're getting really good at the easy ones, we write harder ones, and yeah. we go back up to where we're catching thirty or forty percent again. <laughs> yeah. So. This is a, an ongoing thing. I love that you mentioned ongoing. Yeah. It, uh, I, I'm one of these guys that has the, all the fishing posters and stuff, and I move them around the office. I put them on the toilet, put them on people's desk. Um, it, you need to constantly be reminded mm -hmm. because the um, threat is persistent. You know, you're, every time you're checking your email or out there uh, you know, browsing the Internet for something, mm -hmm. you don't know where you're going right. if you're not paying attention to it, right? So mm -hmm. I think that training is such a big piece. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of you, you bolt on some education with that as well? You said we do. We is do. that like online or is There's it the online uh, education piece? And then our team actually goes out and educates the local companies. Awesome, good. So, so that's the kind of thing you should avail yourself, especially with the new year coming. You know, kick off the new year with a mm -hmm. cyber campaign if you don't have one. Uh, an internal campaign for your people yeah. um, is a great way to start the year. Um, so we're gonna. Uh, I think it's about time for a break. Um, mm -hmm. So let's do that for a minute. We'll pay some bills and we'll be right back. <laughs> You can beat the world, you can beat the war You could talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Stay in the Hall of Fame Be 
Hey, welcome back to Hawaii. This is the Cyber Underground. I'm your host today, Andrew, the security guy, and I'm here with Chuck Lurch from High Tech Hui. And we're talking about small, medium business, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been going through some of the best advice and some of the major problems that we find that we see out there in the small, medium business market. Um, and the final point we want to talk about in that area is just this idea about it, employees requiring to use strong passwords. And you know, there was a there was a thing there for a while about changing your passwords all the time. And now what we found is these employees are, you know, their password was something hard, something hard, one, two, three. And so when you tell them to change it, they just go something hard, something hard, one, two, four. Something right. hard, something <laughs> hard, one, two, five. So I've seen some of the advice changing there as right. far as frequency of changing. But strong passwords, which until we can get rid of passwords, which is what we need to do, uh, strong passwords are still going to be a, uh, mm -hmm. be with us. So what sort of stuff do you see out there and then what okay. sort of advice do you do you give? Sure. So, I mean, strong passwords are key. And yeah. even beyond that, dual factor authentication is yeah, key now. You have to do it now. I yeah. mean, that, there's no way around it. So you it. just can't trust the password at all. That's what we said. <laughs> yeah. you, you heard it here. So, um, but what we recommend for small business, like I so said, small work groups, you know, maybe using a last pass. There's a multiple like small business ways to share passwords amongst each other. And let's say you have an employee that, you know, you have maybe some turnover and you don't want them to see your passwords to like your banking site, but they're your controller or they work your accounting department, so they need that. Mm. So it's a way to mask the password so they can't go in and start messing with things. So, like, so we use LastPass a lot. We see that a lot in the industry and recommending that. Sure. And on the enterprise side, we like Thycotic. Okay. Um, it's been out for quite a while and it's got amazing uh, password tools and it goes, actually goes through your Active Directory and starts looking for different things. Nice. So scanning for if, where they're stored, things like yep. that on the network. Okay, yeah. good. And so, and then multi, let's talk about multi-factor real quick. So yeah. it's something as simple as Google Authenticator, yep. Microsoft Authenticator. Or you can get a UB key today, which is something you insert, like a USB mm -hmm. or a smart card. Yep. Um, how how um, prevalent do you see that? Oh, multi-factor. So that's actually, you know, in this controls, it's like, um, they, they talk about it, right? And the UB keys and all these other ones, they're good and bad. Yeah. So if you have access to the box, um, if you insert a UB key into your domain admin, you can actually find a way to get that that credential because it's it's uh, hard coded mm -hmm. and have access to the whole environment in like 2 seconds. Ouch. So so they're not always everything. They're right? not always everything. Yeah. You just got to be very careful and um there's a link we could probably post with a little article about that maybe okay. later. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. And um so you mentioned uh, um this there a minute ago. So let's uh yeah. so for the small business community out there there's some some help coming your way from the government. Mm -hmm. Um the House, uh, just this past month, no, this isn't December, yeah. So in November, they have finally approved this NIST Small Business Cybersecurity Act. Mm -hmm. So they are leaning on NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, yep. to get us some guidance for small business, right. um, for that community, because they recognize that they need help. Right. And, but they don't know what to do. Like mm -hmm. you said before, all, there's all these tools, there's so <laughs> many things. What, how, what do we do? How do we start? Yep. And um, some of the guidance that, that those of us that work in regulated industry mm -hmm. have come under, uh, uh, really it already started, but if, if you didn't get started yet, you're going to see it in your contracts uh, on January 1st of this year, mm -hmm. is a set of controls called the 800-171. Yep. Um, you want to give us your two cents on what those are? I've said it over and over again, but it's, uh, what, how many, 109? Yeah, I was going to say 110, but yeah, 110 109. controls. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bunch of controls that are put in place by the U.S. government to make sure that you're doing the right things to protect their data yeah. and your data uh, and event, you know, and help prevent all these breaches from happening and having this government data being just put out there in the market yeah. for people to buy. I mean, that's, that's a short story. Sure. And they, and so the, um, the, um, the, you know, everyone's probably heard of things like classified information, yeah. um, secret information, top secret information. So the government's finally come down and wanted to address uh, specifically, the 800-171, mm -hmm. uh, I'll get the title for you here, yep. is called the, um, uh, yeah, yeah, what did I do with it? Um, it's the, it's protecting controlled, unclassified information mm -hmm. in non-federal information systems and organizations. Right. So that is the commercial community at large. And this is information that wasn't previously considered as uh, at, you know, risky mm -hmm. for the government to have exposed out there. But now they've said, hey, um, if you have perhaps technical drawings, uh, security drawings, for example, in my case, of a government facility, um, we now want to put some controls mm -hmm. in place around that information so it's not just blowing in the wind and available right. for everyone. Um, the controls themselves to a, a, a technical person like yourself, and mm -hmm. these are not all technical, but 
Um, what we're talking about there is the configuration yes. of, of a tool in your, a setting in your Active Directory, for example, or a level of encryption that you've mm -hmm. implemented on a, uh, a data store, like on a file, or your hard drives, for example, right. where you're storing information. Um, I know you've, you've kind of been through these and you're working yeah. to offer these, these 800-171 sort of assurance services to folks. Yeah. Do you, uh, what's your take on these controls? Because out of the enterprise, okay. you saw the whole 853, yeah. which is another set, a larger set of federal controls. There are 1,700 something. Yes. So obviously small business can't handle that. Yeah. So they stripped it down, gave us 110. Mm -hmm. What's your, your feeling about you know, getting compliant here? So I always talk about there's compliancy and there's security. So compli <laughs> <Okay>. so <laughs> you can be com you can still be compliant, but still be somewhat insecure. I see. So I mean, it's great to have all these checks in place, and but you got to remember some of these things that if you check box on the compliance, mm -hmm. there's mitigating or there's ways to get around some of these check boxes. I see. So if you're uh, a hacker, so when you say get around, there's known vulnerabilities yes. for that setting. Okay, so that's important for our, our right. audience. So like I was talking a second ago about the multi-factor. Mm -hmm. So dual factor authentication, there's actually ways around that. So any antivirus, any, you know, for every security product that's out there today, mm -hmm. there's a workaround. Not so sweet. even though that you're, you're hitting all your guidelines and you know, you're, you know, you're good, you still need to pay attention to what's going on in the market. It's an ongoing battle. Mm -hmm. So even though you're, you're going to be compliant and you have, you're written off, you still need to be watching. Yeah. So, and the monitoring is a big piece yes. of that. So the, when we, when we sort of talk about cyber maturity, you know, you've got yeah. um, this, this control. You know, you've got to have a policy for the control and you need mm -hmm. to know why you're using it. Then you've got to actually implement the control. Yeah. In this case, you're told how to implement, or a yeah. minimum level that you must implement mm -hmm. it to. Um, but once it's implemented, now we've got monitoring, mm -hmm. we've got automation, yeah. perhaps, we've got reporting. So there are many more pieces to that, to that uh, cyber maturity uh, sort of posture than mm -hmm. just installing the firewall, for example. If right. you just install it and you never look at the log files, really you could, there's no telling, you have no way of knowing what's going on on it. Exactly. Or you don't set up alerts mm -hmm. to come to you, things like that. So you, uh, you guys provide services like this yes. to small business. Where does that information aggregate? Like from their, if they have some tools mm -hmm. from you, they've implemented, word, what is it? Does it text them on their phone? What happens to that, those, those alerts, let's call them? Right, so um, it, it all depends on the level that they're able to afford too. So a lot of these services, they do cost money. Sure. Well, <laughs> nothing, nothing good is free, let's put it that way. Yes, yes, so um, depending on the business and, and their needs, right? So we have uh, SOC services, so that's a security operations center that's 24-7. And that's another very important piece. So all these products you can choose from, you got to make sure they work together at least that they can, mm. all these logs can go to a place that are readable. Mm -hmm, sure. Right? So, and somebody read them and knows how to read them exactly. and knows what they mean. So you need to do your research. You need to find, you know, if, you, if it's a SOC company or whoever you choose, that they know the, the products that you're implementing or your IT provider is suggesting that you implement. And so that they'll either A, alert you to, you need, hey, you need to black hole this IP or you need to make this change to your firewall, or B, give them access to go ahead and make the change for you, let's say at, at 1 a.m. on a Saturday night or sure. Saturday morning. And so those are le those levels of services. Yep. You know, if you don't have an IT person in your shop yep. that could perhaps get this alert from the SOC and then make the change or, or, or implement mm -hmm. what the, the mitigation, whatever may be needed there, then they have services that can handle this for you. And then you just get a report and they, you can often see, I get several of them, and I see how many th threats were there, how many were mitigated, what was ended. So it's, it's kind of interesting to mm -hmm. live in that world. And if, you're, if you haven't seen this information coming at you, a lot of people just aren't aware right. that it's constant. What mm -hmm. is called the ad advanced persistent ABT, threat, right? Yeah. These things are just out there attacking you all the time. And just because you're in small business, it, it isn't singled you out. It's just attacking everyone. Right. <laughs> Well, actually, I think it actually makes you more of a target because I know the small businesses don't oh, have yeah. the, uh, the right controls in place. Yeah, the horsepower, times. then I keep not keeping the firewalls updated, yeah. as you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these, these are um, bot, bot attacks, they're worms, mm -hmm. they're these things that are, yeah. that are out there, they're moving around, they, they move in certain ways, and they're looking for those open doors yeah. that you may have exposed and uh, maybe uh, let's talk a little bit about some internal exposure. So there is okay. the whole problem of uh, uh, bringing things inside oh, your course. own environment, right? Yeah. You've got wireless set up inside your office. Now you've got employees letting them use their, their mobile devices mm -hmm. on your wireless, for example. 
and they get a, some malware on the phone, they walk yeah. in the door, now it's on your network. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. Yeah, and, and, and without some of these tools, oh, totally. you've got no way to know, right? So if you've got some of these monitoring tools in place, they'll see that internal threat, perhaps shut it down, but at least maybe alert you that it's there. Right, and then sometimes what we'll do is we'll drop a couple of USB drives outside the office and see if the employees bring them in and try little to pen testing. Yeah. Yeah. And what does it say? <laughs> Caught you? <laughs> a little more than that, but yes. Yeah, right <laughs> so. on. Right on. So uh, we got yeah. a few minutes left. What yeah. would you? Um, what kind of advice would you give to the small business guy who's? Uh, let's mm -hmm. we'll step back away from the regulated industry yeah. stuff first, and just you know, um, you know, you got a small shop. You you want to try to make sure you're you're safe. What the Give us your top three or four things you, that you think these guys need to do. Um, one, make it a priority. I, I think that's the number one thing, and, and make it a part of the culture. And if you need mm -hmm. help with training, of course, you know there's many ways to do that. Mm -hmm. But that, I think that's number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, ha you know, have a good antivirus, right? Something that works, um, and have it up to date. Even if it's signature based, you'll still be behind. But at least if it's up to date, it's better than yeah. nothing. Yeah. So so pay for that that service, right? Service, the monthly yeah. service fees. And a good backup. Like, so you keep hearing about all these, oh, I got ransomware and, you know, I can't do anything. Well, if you have a good backup and it doesn't cost that much to have a good backup, you don't have to pay them. There you go. Right? So, I mean, those, those are some... And by the way, test your backups. Yes. Restore them once in a while <laughs> as a part of your policy so that you yep. can make sure you have a good backup. Backups are known to fail from time to time. Right. Um, and if you want to go a little more advanced, like you can download like Nextpose or Tenable for free and actually start scanning your home networks and just to... Start seeing what's out there, and so you get a little better understanding, kind of what we see. Awesome. Yeah. So, for the small businesses out there, it's not hopeless. Yep. Chuck gave you some great advice there. Get started today. Make it a priority. Okay. There are some free tools out mm -hmm. there. Avail yourself of them. Yep. But get smart about what you've got. Do an inventory. See what's there. See what's updated. Keep it patched. Uh, and do your best to be safe. Sandra Lanning, Chuck Lurch, we're yeah. signing off from the Cyber Underground on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us again next week, and we'll have some more um, good, maybe scary, but hopefully good stuff for you. Aloha. Aloha.